Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Calhoun's. You know, Valentine's Day, just around the corner. Calhoun's isn't just a great place for barbecue, guys. They will be having filet and shrimp, prime rib and shrimp, specials like you wouldn't believe. They're already taking reservations at Calhoun's.com for that special occasion. Valentine's Day, if you can't make it out on that day, make it in one of those days around then. Calhoun's, they've got a million locations. Well, maybe less than a million, but close. In East Tennessee, get out to Calhoun's and check them out at Calhoun's and go to Calhoun's.com to learn more or to make reservations. Okay, I want to welcome in the next two members of our panel. We have right here Mark Pankratz in, as always, to talk basketball with us, the former uh, Vol assistant and former D1 player at uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Down there we have Mr. Mike Strange, longtime coverer of Tennessee basketball. Um, plenty more football to come. We'll also t I'll tell you why Butch Jones ought to get out of here. Uh, that's coming up. <laughs> But, Mark, a bad loss for Tennessee last night. No way around it. You blow a 19-point lead against Mississippi State. Um, you get out hustled in the second half. Rick Barnes didn't, didn't have his best night. Uh, I did like, after the game, though, somebody asked him about the officiating. He talked about it briefly and said, I forget it. We didn't, we didn't play hard enough to win. Uh, good for you. Don't put it on the ref. Uh, they didn't hit free throws. Bad night. What was the key to that bad night? What was the wrongest of the wrong last night, Mark Pancras? Well, I think we got comfortable and stopped defending. Uh, I think we were looking for Robert Hubs, Hubs to step up, and, and, and he didn't. Um, Lamonte Turner as a backup point guard just was a no-show. Uh, but ultimately, this team, we don't have – everyone that wants to get held up on, on the star – we don't have the five stars. We're not overly talented. We've got to out-hustle and out-execute every team night in and night out to win. And we didn't do that. We got comfortable, uh, and Mississippi State found some momentum and, and were able to pull out the win. Guys, your thoughts on this loss? And the, the sad thing is it, it throws cold water on what was a pretty good victory again at Auburn over your, your former coach, who's now 1-4 and four against you. And I remember the Clay Travis tribe, that group that said at the time, I'm going to pull for Auburn now. They're going to have a lot of fun. They're going to be so much better than Tennessee. How's that working out for you? So you had that big win, and you're thinking, okay, you'll cruise to Mississippi State, and then that goes wrong, and you kind of get the cold water thrown. Your thoughts on last night's loss, Jimmy Himes? I, I thought the first half Tennessee played pretty well. Mississippi State couldn't throw it in the ocean, but Tennessee played pretty well. I was getting concerned about Tennessee missing so many free throws even yeah. at the start of the game. But in the second half, I, I thought Mississippi State got to the basket way too easy on some transition. And I thought Tennessee, uh, you, you've heard Rick Barnes talk about this team is not really good late in the shot clock. They got late in the shot clock a lot, and I thought too often late in the shot clock, it ended up in Lou Evans' hands, and he's not your best playmaker. And I thought that hurt him too. So I thought those two things, and, and I don't think hardly anybody for Tennessee played well in the second half. I, I think Mark Pankers nailed it, though. There, there's, there's no margin for error with this basketball team. Everybody has got to play their best. It sounds so cliche, but it, it reminds me of the early Bruce Pearl teams when you looked on the court and, and they were outmanned and they were overmatched and they didn't have a lot of people. But by gosh, everybody played hard. They got the 50-50 balls. And yesterday, Tennessee really got beat in the paint really bad. And it's been a long time since we've ten seen Tennessee out-muscled. But uh, against all expectations and odds, they're so undersized. They've been out-rebounding teams. Yesterday, Mississippi State was the bigger, more physical team and they played like it, Mike, and I thought that the rebounding, what was it, 21 offensive rebounds for State, I thought that was the key. I thought uh, Tennessee had a four-game winning streak. I, I think this is kind of like the stock market. Yep. You know, it, it surges and you expect there to be a correction, so I, I expected a correction. Now, not when you got a 19-point lead, maybe, yeah. but I, the second half, I don't think anybody played well, and they looked tired to me. It's basketball. It's roller coaster. I no, think I said that last week on the show. I said they no, lose Nobody had a good day. Uh, no. the, the players didn't, Rick Barnes didn't, the officials didn't. Um, Vols tournament resume, let's take a look at uh, what it looks like at the moment. Overall record 12 and 10. You don't count the Chaminade victory there, Division 2. Southeastern Conference record 5 and 5. Ken Pomeroy's rating is 37. Real time RPI still has him at 35. So this loss yesterday didn't kill you. Those are after last night's losses. NCAA, as of 1059, hadn't updated their. RPI today. Thank you, NCAA. That's about what you're good for. Uh, your thoughts, was this the death knell? That was the reaction on Twitter. I got several, you know, season's over, that kind of stuff uh, that, you, that you saw out there. Is this the death knell for this team's tournament resume? Mark Pankratz. Well, I, I didn't think we'd get to the NCAA tournament. Regardless, I thought we were overperforming. And, and, uh, but when you look at it, there are so many losses in college basketball. Arizona, the, the top five team in the country, goes to lose by 30 points yesterday. 
So there's gonna everybody's gonna have bad losses. That was Oregon, wasn't it? It's Oregon. Oregon. Oregon, Oregon yeah. Oregon's really good, but still. So yes, if we go out and, and win the remaining parts of our schedule, we can make the tournament. But I just don't I don't think that we have the ability down the stretch to win enough games to have the record. RPI may be there, but I don't think we'll do it. I, I didn't think they'd make the tournament going into last night's game, so I don't think they will coming out. But I don't think last night is the the death stroke, death blow, death knell. I think what, death. Six, six of the top six of the top ten teams lost yesterday, I believe. And from an RPI standpoint, that was the worst loss. Uh, I think Mississippi State was 120. Previously, it was Chattanooga was an 88 RPI loss. This is a loss that if you don't make the tournament, you look back on, John. But I think if they win the games they're supposed to win and win a couple in the SEC tournament, I still think they can make it. This was the worst loss. I mean, this, this one is comparable to the Ole Miss loss. You blow a big lead on the road against it's the team you, sh you should probably beat. But, but we still have to continue to take a step back and talk about – where we can't yes in the moment it was a bad loss but in the big scope of the season of where this program yes. is at I think compared Butch to Jones what we thought you. that where we're supposed to be it, it's it <laughs> the season is going above above par somebody tweeted me last night i thought this is pretty good and it said uh, you know upset with the loss but it's nice to feel about the ut basketball program again so you have something something was riding on it now you have tournament hopes kind of riding on this which you didn't have last year uh, so it is going in the right direction I don't think it's a death knell. I think it narrowed your margin. I, I think you could afford to lose to Kentucky and South Carolina. You better win the rest, and you may have to make a run in the SEC tournament. But if your RPI is in the top 40 and your strength of schedule is in the top five in the country, you got a shot. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to mention this. Tennessee did get a uh, commitment 2017 big man Derek Walker, six foot eight, listed at 220. Although there were reports he came in yeah. at 250. Uh, picked UT over Georgia and St. John's, but he's just a three star. <laughs> he, he weighed in at 255 on his Tennessee visit. A two he played wide receiver last year. A 255-pound three-star. Well, Grant three Williams star. was listed as 6'8". He's probably more like 6'6 six, six when, <laughs> when he gets on Barnes' roster and he's actual factual. All right. When we come back, we're going to turn it over to football for a little bit. Bob Hodge joins us with the rest of our football panel. We're going to talk about uh, three questions, quick hitters on Tennessee's 2017 season. Come on back. Come to Sports Force. <laughs> 